there are a few sections. The first one is cluster analysis. We're going to go over how to create clusters uh, based on a data set and also classification and regression. And then association, correlation, how to, how to detect outliers. And lastly, dimensionality reduction. So let's get started. Section 2.1, cluster analysis. So cluster analysis, um, well, in data science, typically there are two big categories. One is supervised learning, the other is unsupervised learning. So cluster analysis is uh, considered as unsupervised learning, meaning you won't have, you don't have the labels, right? It's unknown uh, data set, meaning the data is unknown, but you will have some features, but you don't know that how this, the data set or each data point is classified. So let's get started. Um, as you can see that we're using the same um, single family home values that CSV, same data set that we got from uh, Zillow from the first uh, lecture. And then what you can see is that same as before, we're importing Panda, Seaborn, NumPy, Matplotlib, right? And then sklearn.cluster, right? So from sklearn.cluster, import k-means. So this is where uh, the library that we'll be using for uh, cluster analysis. So sklearn is a really great uh, library as discussed last time. It has many, many models that you'll be using. Uh, and then, so let's, let's get started. So as usual, we'll load it into Panda. So Panda pd dot read csv and then with the csv file and then we'll look at the dot head right df df dot head right we'll actually see how data looks like it's going to be the same as last time and i remember we have done something like you know info is something that's very useful from last time right it was, this will tell you the types of data um, that you have in this data set as well as like df dot describe remember describe you can actually look at some of the basic stats for numerical features okay so now let's say even though this data set remember it's uh we're trying to predict estimated value right so this is considered as um a supervised learning because you already know the outcome the outcome is known and then you try to fit a model that will give you the prediction based on these features, right, these features, and also the non-outcome. However, uh, we want to reposition this problem, right, so that it becomes unsupervised learning, because here we're going to talk about clustering analysis. So let's say df.drop. So I don't know if I've talked about this last time, but we can actually drop any field that we want, right? Um, so estimate, uh, estimated value. So this will actually drop a column. You can actually say in place is equal to true or uh, just assign it back to your DF, right? So, uh, I wanna say, so estimated, estimated value, estimated, I think I estimated, it. Mm. Okay, that's weird, it's giving me, is this gonna, okay, so, estimated, okay, got it. So, sometimes you have to do this, axis um, is equal to one. So um, like this, right? So you can actually drop it. So this will tell you that, okay, I don't want, I want to drop the entire column. So axis one is doing that for you. So um, you can actually say df is equal to that or just say df2, right? Uh, or in this case, we want to say x is equal to uh, that. Um, so say our x is um, all the columns without this last estimated value. Right, and then we can actually create a very simple classification, uh, very simple cluster, clustering um, analysis, right, based on this. So let's say, um, oops, apologies. So uh, I think I, okay, so let's say I want to use, uh, I want to slice this X. Remember this X is the type of that, so it's, this is actually very useful too. So type of X is, you can see that's data frame, so you can actually slice it, right? Whenever it's a pounder's data frame, you can slice it. So what if I say, I want to use, uh, let's say, because ID, you don't want to include that as your feature and so forth. Um, I mean, we could have used latitude, longitude, or zip code, but let's say we just want to use, uh, you know, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, lot size, years built, like, like this, right? Um, you can actually just copy it over and then pretty much put the field 
um, names like this. And then this will pretty much just uh, slice your DF to only include these columns, right? So let's see. Okay, so now we have uh, all these columns here built, and then maybe we'll do prior sales amount, right? Because that was one of the uh, important features uh, last time we have found that. So then we can say x is equal to this. So now if we look at x, right, you can actually do x dot hat. You, uh, you can actually see that x has all these columns, right? And then you can actually say again, you see some null values, I will fill it with zero. And then do in place is equal to true. Oh, okay, so okay, so now this is great. So we prepare our X pretty much as a feature matrix. And now as you can see that I already uh, rolled down the code, but now we can actually create a bunch of clusters. So the first thing you will need to do is after um, you need to initiate um, a k-mean, right? So in here, you have imported this uh, model, right? So what you need to do is k-mean, and then you want to say how many clusters you want to have. It can be two, it can be three, right? So we can actually have it five, say. So this you wouldn't know until you try it a few times. Like it takes some like iterations for you to understand how what is the best uh, number of clusters you want to put in there. So then random state is to uh, for you to get the same results, right? Every time when you run this code so that you're fixing a seed and then fix uh, and then fit of this X, right? And then I want to assign this back to Kimi, right? So that's how this will work. Uh, and clusters. My apologies and clusters. Okay, so now if we just like print out KME like this, right? You can actually see KME has all this like, okay, algorithm is auto, copy X true, uh, that it has the property of this KME um, model, right? So now we can actually say KME, uh, KME, if you just put down KME, so let's, let's put S, right? So that we have, okay, so KME dot and then try to click, if you're a Mac user, you can just click on tab. So this will actually give you all the functions, like embedded functions or innate functions coming from k-means, right? So this is coming from uh cluster and then dot k-means. You can see all these, you know, cool functions. First, let's look at labels, right? Let's look at labels. So labels is like, it says the first data point belongs to cluster one, Second data point belongs to cluster one and so forth. And then it's up to four because uh, it's gonna start from zero, right? So we're gonna have cluster, cluster zero, one, two, three, four, four. So in total, five, uh, five clusters. So, okay, that's great. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of labels. And then if you look at the, sh uh, the length of this, right? Cause this is an empire, array. Right? Um, so the length of this should match with the number of, um, record that you have in your X, right? So you can see that it's 15,000, 15,000. The seven is number of columns that X has, our feature matrix has. All right, great. So now let's do something, right? So let's look at k-means.cluster centers. So this is kind of interesting, right? So this will tell you um, for each uh, cluster, where is the center? Where is the center for all these like Feature so the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven features in total, and then this will tell you, will give you the vector, right? It's uh, a vector of um, in seven dimension space because you have seven features. So let's look at you know uh, a quick uh, shape of this, right? So you can see the shape is five, seven, so five clusters, and then seven features, right? So then, because it's an empire, we can just say, so for first cluster, which is cluster zero, you can see that this is the center. So feature one, remember, it's, uh, we have, where is X? So let's see, let's do X dot head again. Um, 